Good afternoon. My name is Shadrach Roberts, and I work in USAID at the GEO Center. And the goal of the GEO Center is to help the rest of the agency leverage and use geographic information for better development interventions. I want to tell you a little bit about uh, crowdsourcing, the agency's first crowdsourcing project that we just finished up with our colleagues in the Development Credit Authority. Now, the Development Credit Authority uses credit guarantees to encourage local banks to loan to local lenders that are credit worthy but underserved. So they underwrite some of the risk. And what they were interested in doing is actually mapping where they work. And they wanted to do this to be transparent, but they were also really interested in being able to coordinate with other lending institutions that do this, to look for gaps in their programming, to try and get a better idea of how things could be done better. So they came to us and said, this is great. We'd love to, to use some of these tools to map and, and look where we're at and share our data. And they have a beautiful data set of about 100,000 records, more than 100,000. It spans 12 years of the program's history. But there was one fatal flaw, and that was that the geographic location had never been standardized in any way. And in each of these 100,000 records, you have a free string of text that could be anything from an exact address to an administrative unit to some local description and a qualitative, uh, qualitative description in a local language. So what we had to do is parse out, we had to mine each one of those records and parse out city names, place names, something standard that we could start to map on. So how did we do this? Well, the first thing we realized is that we were going to run into some trouble computing. So we had to use a hybrid method. This gets to what Patrick was just talking about. You can't have the crowd do everything. So we reached out to our partners at, the, at NGA, who helped us automate a process to go through some of these. But then we had to start thinking about where we would go from there. We still have thousands of records that we need to parse out. Well, when it's just a couple of us sharing information on a government system, that's fine. The server's happy, our chief, uh, corp our chief information officer's happy. But when you start talking about crowdsourcing and how you're going to bring in a whole bunch of people in an online environment, that starts to create some concern. When you start talking about publishing open data and having different APIs, a lot of our big institutions aren't necessarily prepared for this yet, and that becomes a real drag on the system. So we had to partner with uh, our friends at ESRI, we partnered with Socrata, and we ended up building an application on data.gov, which is a US federal repository for data, so that for the first time, it could actually be used as a crowdsourcing platform. Once you have to deal with the infrastructure issues, another big surprise, especially if you're in a big federal or international humanitarian agency, is policies. There was a big question about whether or not we could even use volunteer labor. We came up against policies about personally identifiable information. We came up with policies that governed how much information we can share. So if you work at a big agency, you really need to cozy up to your lawyers and your general counsel to find out if you can do this at all. So after we dealt with infrastructure, after we dealt with policy, the third really big thing that you, big agencies need to think about when they're engaging with crowdsourcing is the relationship. We had fantastic support from the Standby Task Force and from GIS Corps. Many of the pivotal people that made that happen are in the audience today. I encourage you to talk to them. But we really needed to have a discussion with them, and we needed to clearly articulate exactly what we needed volunteers to do. And they wanted to clearly articulate with us exactly what their capacity was. So there had to be a real discussion in a project sense around this. But the beautiful thing that happened is the more we started to talk about it and, and, and build interest in this, is there became more of a discussion about development in general. And the volunteers that we were working with got more invested in USAID's data and what USAID was doing. So we're moving beyond just open data and open transparency that you can go click on a map and find something. We're moving to an actual engaged conversation with a constituency. And that's really important. So how did we do at the end? I think we did very well for our first round. We had 300 volunteers sign up. Uh, we were able to process 10,000 records that could only be done with a human, couldn't be automated. The accuracy assessment was about 85%. Um, we did it in 16 hours. We treated it like a very bounded project, which has some implications for disaster response. But the other thing, as I said, is there was much more interest in what Development Credit Authority was doing, and people started to monitor Development Credit Authority on Twitter and Facebook and really get more interested in this programming. So now Development Credit Authority has a set of beautiful maps online. And USA admissions and banks all over can take a look at where credit guarantees are available. They can share these maps with other donors to better coordinate. But we didn't just want to trap the data in a mapping application, as and the last speaker very rightfully pointed out. We wanted to make the data open. So all of the data that we have can be used by other groups, like openspending.org, to take a look at what the Development Credit Authority is doing in ways we might not have even anticipated. So all of these things, the maps, the scrupulously handcrafted metadata, the accuracy assessment and a very, uh, a very detailed methodological study is all available online. You can find it by searching USAID Crowdsourcing Transparency or tweet to USAID underscore credit. 
Because in reality, transparency about international aid isn't about just putting your dots on a map and showing where you work. It's about saying how you work and what you know. Thank you very much.